Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again. This is episode three of five on light. How it's affected humans was episode one. What light even is was episode two and how it behaves as both a particle and a wave. Wow, was that a big one. Make sure you listen to that one. And today we're gonna talk about how our observation of light, our biology is probably limited in changing how we look at light in general. No pun intended for that one. Light is a particle and a wave, yes, but it's also electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic waves. So all light falls on the electromagnetic spectrum. The idea being that light can have little teeny wavelengths or really big wavelengths. You've heard of all of these different things and they are all part of the same EM spectrum. Gamma rays have the shortest wavelength, which means they're going up and down really, really fast. like. 0.01 nanometers per wavelength, about the size of an atomic nucleus, one wave. X-rays, that is the ones that go through our bodies, we use them at the dentist or the doctor or whatever, they range in wavelengths from about 0.01 to about 10 nanometers or about the size of an atom. Ultraviolet radiation, UV light, that is about the size of a virus. Visible light, which is the stuff that we see all around us all the time, and that is ranging in size from about the size of a molecule all the way up to the size of a protozoan. The sun emits all of this radiation, by the way, and it's emitting it in all of these different ranges, but the visible range is the only one that we can see. That's where all the colors of the rainbow live, and that's where our eyes are sensitive to. They don't see anything else. We'll delve into that in a second. On the other side of visible light, as we get to longer and longer wavelengths, we get infrared light, and that's from the width of about a pinpoint to the size of small plant seeds. Radio waves are pretty much anything longer than one millimeter up to, you know, a little bit, like a few miles. Radio waves can be as big as a marble or a person or a football field or miles long. They're big. Above that, we don't really know. We don't really have anything to call it. But the longest waves, have the lowest energy, and the highest energy are those little gamma rays. So, you know, the Hulk, he was hit by all those gamma rays. They're super high energy waves. Radio wavelengths, though, they hit you all the time. You're getting hit by it right now. Radio wavelengths are found in the background radiation of the universe and in interstellar clouds and the cool remnants of supernova explosions and beamed right into your cars and your Wi-Fi. Everything that you're doing, you're surrounded by radio waves. Even GPS is radio. And all of this, all of this electromagnetic radiation that you hear the word radiation, you start freaking out, all of that you could just call light. Some of it's light that we can observe, some of it's not. UV light, we can't see, but it's still light. Infrared light is on the other side, we can't see that either, but it's still light. We humans like to think of light as the stuff that we see because we're very, I don't know the word for this, human and focused, I guess, or like something like that, but all of this is the same types of energy with just a different wavelength. When it comes to the wavelengths that we can perceive, because we're so hominin focused, as mentioned before, humans only see that little bit in the middle. We call it visible light. It consists of wavelengths ranging from 780 nanometers to 390 nanometers, or specific light within the visible spectrum coincides to different colors. So the smaller the nanometers, the more bluish, purplish indigo it is. The wider it is, the more orange, yellow, and red it is in reverse. The long wavelength end of the spectrum is perceived as red. The short length is perceived as violet. Other colors within the spectrum, obviously orange, yellow, green, and blue are in the middle. So our perception of light is just our brain saying, oh, that's approximately this wavelength. That's approximately that wavelength. According to physicsclassroom.com, color can be thought of as a psychological and physiological response to light waves of a specific frequency or set of frequencies impinging upon the eye. So the sun shoots out this radiation, it bounces off a baseball in front of you, and we perceive what doesn't get absorbed and does get absorbed by that baseball. Baseball's nice because everything's hit by white light. All of the skin of that baseball, if it's a white one and it's brand new, it's reflecting a lot of that white light. So that's what we see. It's reflecting all those different nanometers you know, of wavelengths. The red ones, though, are absorbing all of the different wavelengths except the red ones, which is where it gets confusing. It's not absorbing red, it's reflecting red. 
Our perception of that white light depends on which wavelengths are being reflected at us. The light wavelengths that are reflected hit the retina at the back of the eye. The retina is lined with a bunch of light sensing cells known as rods and cones. And while the rods on the retina are sensitive to the intensity of light, the cones are the ones that decide what colors get interpreted by the brain. There are six or seven million cones, and they're mostly in about a 0.3 millimeter spot on the back of your retina called the fovea centralis. That's where all the color information that gets sent to your brain comes from. And because of these little cells, we can sense the different nanometer levels of the electromagnetic spectrum, but only that little teeny bit. And then our brain processes those things into color the way that we perceive it now. So if you think about all this, you know, light is this huge, huge thing, and we can only see such a small piece of it. Imagine, just for a second, if you could see infrared light, just just, you know, wider than what we can see. Or imagine if you could see radio waves. If you could see infrared, you could see how warm people are, how much heat they're giving off. If you could see, you know, radio waves, the way big waves, they'd be everywhere. You could see cell signals floating around. You could see Wi-Fi and radio and all sorts of cool stuff. You could see it going in and out of your phone. That'd be really cool. Astronomers use telescopes that do that. Different celestial objects send out different types of electromagnetic radiation, and astronomers' telescopes are built to suck in certain types of radiation. It's invisible to us and to our, you know, biological eyes, but those sensitive devices, I mean, they're almost like Earth's eyes. And we built them way better than ours, which is really neat. And when you're talking about space and you're talking about light and you're talking about absorbing things from far away, you got to talk about the speed of light. Because that thing is constant and awesome. And it kind of governs a lot of what we know about the universe off our doorstep. So we're going to talk about that a little bit tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe for more Test Tube Plus. Click here on the screen if you haven't subscribed yet and tell your friends about the show. You can find us here on YouTube or if you want an audio podcast, go down into the description and click the link to get us over on iTunes. All is one episode. But thank you for watching, thank you for listening, all of those things. Let us know down in the comments if you have any suggestions on future episodes of Test 2 Plus, future series, and we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Trace. Thanks for watching.